Hi friends, imagine the situation when you urgently need a small power supply, for example, to power a 12 volt load, no more than 30 watts, but at hand there is neither a network transformer nor a corresponding impulse power supply. The radio amateur in such a situation will collect a simple impulse power supply unit in the likeliness of this. As a rule, this circuit is most often repeated, but high voltage field effect transistors and the chip IR2153 are needed and they cost money. This isn't the best option for small power units. You can try to build a single cycle circuit, but transformers in such circuits need careful calculation. The easiest option is an auto-generator half-bridge converter or an electronic transformer circuit. The classical trigger circuit is constructed on the basis of a symmetric tinister, so-called diac, which is sometimes difficult to find. Plus, there is a feedback transformer with winding and phasing of which beginners have troubles. Now, in front of you, there is a circuit which I copied from a rather rare electronic transformer. In this circuit, the basic windings for the transistors are wound around the main transformer, so there is only one transformer and there is also no tinister. The circuit is very simple. The transformer doesn't need a precisely calculation. A few words about the components. Two transistors are from MJE line. You can use MJE 13001, 003, 005. No sense to use more powerful one. The half-bridge capacitors must be rated for a voltage of at least 250 volts, preferably 400 volts. At the output, we have a half-bridge rectifier. A double Schottky diode MBR2045 is used. Such a diode has multiple current reserves. You can use diodes for about of 2 amperes, but it's easier to find our option if you have non-working computer power supplies. The choke inductance is about 100 microhenry. The diameter of the winding wire is 0.65 mm. The parameters of this throttle aren't particularly critical. In the preliminary tests, I used chokes whose inductance was 50% different and they all worked fine. The transformer is the hardest part of this circuit. The size of the core I used is now in front of you. Since the circuit is push-pull, the core half shouldn't have any gaps. It is very important to remember and follow the winding sequence. First, a primary or network winding is wound on the bare frame. It is wound by a wire of 0.3 mm and contains from 130 to 140 turns. The winding is wound layer by layer. It is desirable to isolate each layer. Then, one of the basic windings is wound. It contains five turns and is wound with the same wire as the network winding. Further, on top of this winding is placed isolation and the second coil winds up. It is identical to the first and contains five turns of 0.3 mm wire. On the circuit and on the PCB, I indicated the beginning of the windings. If you connect them correctly, no problems with work will arise. After the next layer of insulation, we wind the secondary winding. By the way, I isolate with a thermo tape. Secondary winding is calculated at the ratio of 1 turn for 1 volt. In my case, the winding contains two shoulders of 12 turns each, with a wire of 0.8 mm. Then, the beginning of the first arm is connected to the end of the second to form the midpoint. According to the circuit, this is the ground point. For the safety, the first switching on of the circuit is necessarily done through a lamp of 20 to 40 watts. Unlike the traditional circuit of the electronic transformer, our version is launched without load. At idle, the filament shouldn't be illuminated. The circuit consumes only 1 watt. Naturally, the transistors will not heat it in any way. The presented circuit doesn't have short circuit protection. Therefore, be careful to prevent the short circuit and never touch the board during operation. The cost of such a power supply is minimal. All components can be found in all computer power supplies, in ballasts of economy lamps and so on. The power of the circuit can easily be increased to 100 watts, but we will talk about this another time. Friends, in the description you will find a full archive of the project with a circuit and a printed circuit board. Also, there are links to the purchase of all the components that are needed to assemble this power source and to the finished electronic transformers. I will try to make another video during which we will load the power source, look at the pulsation and the voltage drop under a certain load in order to understand whether such a power source can be used for serious purposes. Friends, 
If this video was useful, please rate it and share it with your friends in social networks. Don't forget to subscribe to my group in Facebook. The link is under the description. Now I have to say goodbye for a while. With you was Kasian TV.